Good afternoon. Today is May 24th and we are here for the Public Art Advisory Committee and I would like to call this meeting to order. Can I get a roll call please? Chair Burns? Here. Vice Chair Elliott? Member Bates? Here. Member Gusaini? Member Kenny? That brings us right to item number three. Any changes to the agenda that we need to note? I would like to make a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. So moved. Second. All in favor? <laughs> Aye. 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 Thank you. Welcome. Aye. Sorry for being a little late there. That brings us to item number four, public comment for items that are not on the agenda. I have none. Thank you. Which brings us to item number five, approval of the meeting minutes. Can we just take a couple minutes? Yes. To read them over? Thanks. Yep. I believe I have um, public comment for the minutes. For um, Mr. Rogan. Hi, Mr. Rogan, you have two minutes. Oh. Uh, Mike Rogan, 34102. Uh, my question has to do with the original set of meeting minutes um, I'm showing from December 16th 2021 and uh, down under 6a the committee discussed meeting with individual council members and this would be on the matter of uh, uh, the big program and uh, Mr. Perry suggested that it be done in a workshop my question would be, and what I'm trying to find out is, was there in fact a meeting with individual council members and the committee? That's the question I have. I can take that or uh, I will let. I can get back with you, Mr. Mr. Rogan, Merritt. on that and get you the information on how, no, where I, we're at in that process. I, I know there was a meeting that was scheduled as a workshop and I attended that, but was there one addition to that with individual members? That's, that's what I'm looking to find out. Yes, sir. Uh, again, uh, I'll give you my card. And Just to the point, there would not be a workshop with individual members. That's a contradiction of terms. It says both things in here. I understand. But it's not individual meetings at a workshop because that would violate sunshine. So I can, I can address it as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I did not have a meeting uh, mainly because I already know everything there is to know <laughs> about all, the, all that we've gone through. Uh, but uh, uh, the uh, acting uh, director can go through with you on, on the others. You know, it kind of reads as I reread it, it's, it's kind of says one or the other. It doesn't say both. So I thank you, but you can get back to me. Did 
Did we approve the minutes? No. Can I please get a motion to approve the minutes? Motion to approve. I'll second that. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Which brings us to item number six, regular agenda items, public art application, the Park Shore Fund. And I believe I um, need to welcome Mr. Merritt as our interim community services director and also our staff liaison for this process. Thank you, Chair Burns. And I'll do an introduction into this as well, but I'm glad to be here. I'll try to meet everybody individually after the meeting. <laughs> I know we had uh, some that came in a little bit later, but uh, <clears throat> this project is, uh, my understanding, was one that has been ongoing and with the uh, Park Shore Fund. They have raised the funds in the amount of 49000 to be able to, um, I guess, donate this uh, particular art piece to the city and this ties in with the Park Shore and they do have the support uh, from both associations within Park Shore. Today we have uh, Miss Joanne Smallwood and Miss Ellen Siegel that will be doing the presenting and they'll allow this actually this piece will be located at the corner of US 41 and Park Shore Drive. So uh, I will allow them to continue. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm Joanne Smallwood, and I'm here today representing the three Park Shore associations, as it just mentioned. Um, it's the Park Shore Association, the Park Shore Fund, and the um, uh, uh, which is the Park Shore Fund is a charitable fund to improve, enhance, uh, update, and beautify Park Shore, and the Gulf Shore Association of Condominiums, known as GSAC. And all three organizations have stated support the inclusion of par in Park Shore as part of your public art master plan. Uh, last year, I spoke to you about several locations in Park Shore that would be ideal for public art. Today, I'm here to speak about our top location with the sculpture Taking Flight Great Blue Herons, located at the entrance to Park Shore at US 41 and Park Shore Drive. Um, we are prepared, as mentioned, to pay for the uh, sculpture Taking Flight with Great Blue Herons. And to date, over 200 Park Shore residents have donated over, it's now up to $53,000. And uh, to pay for the sculpture. And so we would like to retain ownership of the art so there would be no cost to the public art fund for maintenance. Um, I'm also here to recommend um, our specific artist with our specific environmental uh, theme because we believe that that's appropriate for Park Shore. Um, and I'll begin by showing you a beautiful work by the, the artist David Turner, as you see on the screen. Um, who has created many exceptional sculptures in prominent public locations throughout Naples. Uh, this particular work, Taking Flight, Great Blue Heron, was incorporated with the monument at the Raymond Luckert Park at Park Shore Beach. And um, I'll show you additional. Um, this is the monument at Park Shore, uh, our, our Park Shore Beach Park, with the uh, single Great Blue Heron. So that's already existing? That's already existing. Okay. This one. This, this, is, this is the original uh, single blue heron at the Park Shore Beach Park. And was that put up by the Park Shore Association? Put up by the Park Shore Association, yes, correct. Thank you. So additionally, uh, the Turner sculptures can be found in the following uh, 11 prominent public locations throughout Naples. Uh, there's the Alligator and Ibis at the Bay Colony Clubhouse in Bay Colony, Pelican Bay. And this sculpture was part of the White House First Lady's Environmental Improvement Award presented by First Lady Hillary Clinton at the White House to me as the principal of Smallwood Design Group for this project. There's also the Diving Pelicans at the Conservancy of Southwest Florida. 
and Hingas at the Conservancy of Southwest Florida, a Florida Panther at the Conservancy of Southwest Florida, uh, the Great Blue Heron Pear at the Norris Gardens and Palm Cottage. There's wood storks on Fifth, and Fifth Avenue in front of Chaffee Pasadoma. Uh, there's wood storks at the Audubon Corkscrew Swamp Sanctuary. And there's a black bear family at the Naples Community Hospital um, uh, White Elephant Store, which was originally, if any of you have been here, back when the Pet Teddy Bear Museum was here, it was there. Then there's the barnyard scene at the Youth Haven, and the black bear also at the Youth Haven. And then the taking flight, uh, Great Blue Heron, as you see here again at the uh, Raymond Luckert Beach Park in Park Shore. Uh, David Turner, our sculptor, is a fellow member of the National Society of sculpture and has designed and produced over 100 large-scale commission works for public and private institutions. Some easily recognizable Turner sculpture sites are the National Zoo, Washington, D.C., Constitution Hall, Washington, D.C., the Society for Four Arts in Palm Beach, Jamestown Visitors Center, Jamestown, Virginia, American Museum of Natural History in New York, the Coast Guard Academy, New London, Connecticut, uh, Chicago, uh, South, but Chicago Botanic Garden, Brook Green Gardens, South Carolina, and President George H.W. Bush at the White House. The theme of the environment is ideal for Park Shore, which has incorporated the great, great blue heron, water, and sea grasses into our logo. So we suggest that the entry to Park Shore in US 41 and Park Shore Drive the most, is the most important entrance into the Park Shore community. As you see in the attached slides, this is our, our entry monument. Um, our Park Shore monument was, was designed to have a great blue heron sculpture added to this in order to create harmony in our community with the repetition of compatible sculptures as we show in these slides. And this was a process we started many years ago through the Park Shore Association. And um, you can see we always included art in our, in our uh, concepts and ideas. So in conclusion, um, I have a I would like to, to suggest that you consider our recommendation and we look forward to hopefully working with you in the future. So thank you very much. I also have to give you, to take away with you, my photos. Oh, oh, thank you. I think it's great. I just have a clarification question. So the one that's existing is the one at the beach. Yes. Right? And then the one that you're proposing is the one in the center median as opposed to the right hand side? It's going to be, uh, so let me, let me back up a minute. So. Okay, here's the monument um, at the entrance to US 41 and Park Shore Drive. Uh, we're proposing uh, two beautiful herons. The, the artist has actually done a clay marquette showing the two herons right. and uh, in flight. So one heron will be on top of another flying with reeds at the base, and it will be not on the monument, but, but between the monument and there's a flagpole and we've, we've worked with Heather Shields with the city and uh, other city staff members to make sure that it's appropriately located and, and feasible. And um, it'll be located to, as you're looking at the monument, towards US 41 on the left. Okay. That's in the boulevard, right? 
It's in the median. Yes, in the median. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's that's what I was wondering. Yeah. Any other questions? Um, Councilman Perry? I'm Madam Chair, Paul Perry, City Council. Uh, just a couple of quick questions on it. So the present sculpture at the uh, Butkert Beach Park, who owns that? The Park Shore Association. Okay. And who, uh, who uh, do you raise the maintenance funds for maintaining those? those through through well? the Park Shore Association, yes. And would you be doing similar? You, I saw you anticipated that this new sculpture would be continued to be owned by the Park Shore Association. And, and you have the ability to fund the maintenance on that as that's well? That's correct. And how does that, this is just curiosity, how does that work with the city let's say if the I, I don't expect it would happen but let's say it gets neglected and no one's taking care of it we would make sure that wouldn't happen <laughs> <laughs> believe me <laughs> okay. uh, I just uh, if something's going to default back to the city but since we don't own it that that would cause some problems so we're very we're very cognizant of maintenance of the Park Shore Association if you've ever been to our beach park you'll notice that um, and uh, we have uh, Raymond Luckert's favorite sculpture aspiration at our park, and we maintain that regularly to a great, you know, expense and a great detail, along with the, with the, uh, the, the great blue heron. And is that bronze as well? No, that's marble. Marble. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, just to the question, to then to a larger, with with monument not not for you but for councilman perry is there any sort of like when it comes to structures that associations in the city of naples own or manage is there a protocol for that you know whether it's art or a sign or i can go back and review the uh, ordinance the ordinance does uh there are certain guidelines for donated mm -hmm. I, and i read through that with this uh, actually not being donated and being maintained by the association <clears throat> I would probably have to go back into the ordinance and see if there's something regarding uh, beautification appearance uh, within the planning maybe even zoning ordinances and, and I can report that back to the board thank you I just have one question and it's about liability and insurances for the work who who's responsible for that if it's on a city right of way, but privately owned. Well, I know the park, uh, the Park Shore Fund and the Park Shore Association. The the, the sign that you see, uh, you know, we maintain that every year. Uh, you know, with the, and in fact, there's lighting included there. You can see that also, and we maintain that as well as we maintain the landscape. We took over the the maintenance of the planting from the city. So we pay for and maintain it as well. I understand the maintenance aspect. I'm, I'm wondering about insurances. Like if a kid were crossing the street and fell and hurt themselves on it, or if there's a car crash and they are uninsured, now we have a liability issue for replacement and repair. Who does the um, association anticipate? Who's responsible for that? Where it sits? Is there a policy for it or anything along those lines? I'm not sure. Can I reach out to you, Mark? <laughs> Mark Borelli is, is president of the Park Shore Association and was formerly also president of the Park Shore Fund. And now, Ellen. Thank you. Thank you for seeing us. Um, so we built the monument, as you see there, about five years ago. And we've been maintaining it ever since. Um, that question has never come up to us before. And it is a good question. So we, that would have to be looked into. Thank you. Thank you for the clarification. You mentioned lighting. Is there going to be any lighting on the sculpture? So at night people can still enjoy it? Yes. There will be? OK, cool. Any other questions or comments from the panel? I believe I have one public speaker on the matter, Mr. Rogan.
Mike Rogan, 34102. I think this is probably the essence of what public art is, is when you take it down to the neighborhood. And I think this is what's really important about it. This is what it's all about. As far as rulings on liabilities and car accidents, the only thing I could say is check into what's going on with Fifth Avenue with the Fifth Avenue Businessmen's Association because again, that art goes up without anything other than I think going to planning to approve foundations and such, I think, but I don't know. But I think that's the only thing as far as insurance goes, it's like if one of Hoffman's pieces got knocked over by a car, Hoffman would handle it. I would think your association, I mean, it's your home, it's like in front of your house, they would handle it. With that said, I, I'd make almost no comment about the piece other than I think it's an extremely high quality piece from what I can just see from photos. Um, my only concern is, and again, take it for a grain of salt and use it more as a learning thing for yourselves. Um, in my mind, I'm gonna walk over there, but I won't talk in between, okay? Fair enough, you guys can stand the mic as well. I won't talk. Look over the right shoulder of the monument. Do you see the projection coming up behind it? That's actually across the street. Now that's an original sculpting done by old Grandpa Lundgren. Y'all know who he is. He's the guy that developed all that dirt out there. But that's a piece he actually carved himself. In my humble opinion, for what it's worth, that's one of the best pieces in South Florida. It comes out of Salisbury, North Carolina. He cut it himself, he went up there and cut it. And uh, you're, you're just getting a lot of stuff in that neighborhood. And there's so many other areas, although I can understand how you're working that all together. And I think it'll look pretty neat. Before you put your lights permanent, I would, rec I would recommend that you uh, have the police chief take a peek at that with the lights on because when they changed the Lundgren piece around, it's actually been moved when they put in the streets uh, posts. I mean, those posts out there are like this big around. He moved that thing a little bit to give it a better view and a better backfall up against the building. That's what makes it so cool. But you want to check out that light because uh, you sure don't want to have a piece come around the corner. When that piece went in, as you come around the corner, the color grabs your eye and takes it, and you don't see anything but the color. But that's just kind of the way eyes work. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rogan. Any other discussion from the committee? Um, Mr. Merritt, can you tell us what the next steps are with this, please? Absolutely. I was going to add uh, as well, when you look at um, items within the right-of-way, uh, it's just like a, a sign if we have a sign for a park or a sign for uh, a street sign and a car runs off and hits it uh, that's generally handled by the insurance company of whoever that individual is that hits it so that that kind of takes care of that portion of it it does not address <coughs> if a person is injured on a particularly if they climb it I don't know if a child decides that they want to climb a sculpture that that probably happens uh, but um, we can definitely get some some kind of answer through either through Park Shore or um, we can discuss that from uh, another aspect so um, the next step so per the ordinance the ordinance requires the uh, proposer to come to the pack and at that time it's more or less the blessing to move forward it then has to go to the DRB the DRB will uh, send it back to the pack for a recommendation and then at that point it goes to uh, town or city council excuse me and that's a, that's a, at least what I've read within the ordinance I know that there's maybe some proposed changes within some other documents I don't see where this has to go to the DRB <laughs> I don't understand why that would be a next step the only thing I could say is uh, for the DRB you have to one they're gonna have to require or they're required to get a, um, a right-of-way permit they're also going to be required to uh, determine whether or not utilities uh, plays a role in it. Uh, DRB, it, again, is just within the ordinance. If DRB says this doesn't need to come to us, then we'll bring it back to 
the pack and prepare it for a recommendation. Thank you very much for the clarification on that. Have you looked at utilities in the area? I assume that it's not going to be an issue, I think. Yes, we did actually did have Heather, Heather Shields went out and looked at that. And also, was it Katie? Allison Bickett, thank you. Both of them have, have addressed this. Yep. So I'll get clarification, too, on that, because I think from the utilities standpoint, um, Allison's with uh, Street Stormwater. Um, so I'll, I'll talk and find out if Bob Middleton needs to be involved with that as well. In, or, um, in order to move this forward, can I make a motion that we approve? And if we don't need to do any of those other steps, then this can keep moving. So I'll make a motion that we approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. That brings us to item number seven, correspondence and communications. Does anyone have um, any correspondence or communication they would like to discuss? Mr. Perry, or Councilman Perry. Thank you. Uh, again, Paul Perry, uh, Naval City Council. Uh, the um, uh, several people from the county museums have presented to council uh, their preliminary ideas of making the, uh, the baggage car on Fifth Avenue, a, um, a um, part of the a Black History Museum. And it looks like, depending on what the governor does, but the legislature has appropriated some funds to that cause. I think, if I remember right, $500,000. Uh, so assuming that gets approved, uh, they're anticipating, this is part of the, muse uh, the Co Collier County Museum uh, who already owns that, if I understand it correctly. And that um, one of the things that was suggested, I'm just putting this in your hat so you can think about it, is that in the city of Naples is com committed to put uh, $50,000 uh, into it as well to help the cause, even though it's not owned by the city. But one of the things that was suggested was possibly putting, designing and putting a, uh, shows how little I know about art, uh, the, the piece on the front that would, that would be, that would come through you all uh, as public art. And it's a long ways from being there, but just, uh, I just wanted to raise the issue so that at some point that will um, probably be coming to you for consideration. Do you mean like a mural? Did, when you were thinking a piece on the front, what, it, mural or a painting or you don't know uh, most of this is all just yeah. somebody thinking about it at this point so right. i i wouldn't even hazard to guess what it's going to end up being it could be any of a number of things it could be something like what the fire department has on the side of their building or mm -hmm. something like this basically it's going to be something on that rail car so uh and it could be any of a number of things and did you have a, the timing that you would estimate that all this could happen? They're still raising funds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so <laughs> it could be, and you know, if I were guessing it, it's probably you're not going to see it before a year from now at the earliest, but uh, it is a possibility. And, and presently, what is there, about 850000 or so in the public art fund? I think it's uh, just over 500. I think there was some spent for the public art master plan and then uh, a couple of other items. I think the last I heard it was f just over 500,000 was the current balance. It could be. And I, but I was thinking there were some, isn't there still some coming in from uh, 1111, I think, was supposed to make a substantial contribution. So I don't know where it is, and it's not important right now. And I, I don't anticipate putting a half million dollar project in over there, but it's something that may be coming before you, and it, it's something that may be worth considering. Thank you very much for that update. It's um, exciting, the projects that, the few projects that we get to hear about and the ones that are coming in front of us. 
it's great to see how they incorporate the environment and embody Naples. Um, one of the things we had asked um, is for an update on what the status of the public art fund is um, when we do have these meetings. So um, I know you've, this is your first meeting, so you don't know that, but that is one of the things, which is why it was referenced in the second page of the minutes, I believe. Yeah, com public art development report. So, um, and that's where we find out, you know, how much money there is in the fund, if there is something coming, um, what we can anticipate in the near future. Um, and uh, that's very helpful. And also, can anybody give me a status report on the master plan? Yeah, so, uh, you know, kind of addressing both of those. Uh, with a lot of the transition that we've underwent, uh, obviously I'm, I'm in a new role. Nick was in a fairly new role, and uh, now we have a, a brand new city manager, and uh, myself as well as uh, Chair Burns met with him and had a great conversation on trying to kind of gather ourselves <laughs> back so we can try to get this plan moving forward. So that's kind of where we're at right now. We didn't put anything on here because I don't have really a whole lot of information. This thing was kind of turned over to me within a very short period of time. Um, you know, and I apologize, I'm still trying to learn a lot of what what you guys are doing and what we we need to do. I've read through a lot of the, uh, the ordinances. I read through a lot of the the public art master plan and some of the uh, past meetings that I've went back. So uh, I will definitely make sure that we have an update on the next meeting. Uh, we hope to have a, a pretty good, uh, at least an idea of how we're gonna move forward and, and what we're gonna do. Um, we're still trying to gather the information though as far as you know pushing it forward because council needs, uh, you know, they had some things that they brought up that we want to make sure that we address and have answers for, and that's what we're kind of working for. So hopefully that answers. <laughs> Thank you for that. That brings us to me asking a question about our next meeting, <laughs> which I know I will not be able to attend in June. Um, so I'm looking for consensus for the remainder of, of the committee. Mm -hmm. so June 28th? Yes. June 28th, right? Or four? Yes. Four? Did you say June 28th? Yes. I am unavailable. I'm in a conference. I'm available, but I'm available as far as I know. So we have, we're split. We won't have a quorum on the 28th unless um, Gusani, member Gusani comes. What I can do is uh, send an email out and ask if the, uh, if everybody's gonna be able to attend, obviously the ones that are not present currently and then uh, we can try to uh, determine and I'll send an email out whether or not I'd like to continue them. I know July is usually not a, a month that we have advisory board meetings that I understand and I know the uh, city council is going to be going on their um, break here soon. Uh, I think June 15th is their last so we want to make sure that we uh, at least we have something prepared for when they get back, but we'll have a, at least a meeting opportunity. So um, I'll, I'll let the committee know. Thank you very us. much. I appreciate that. Are there any other matters anyone would like to bring up? I just wanted to um, ask if anyone else had been reached out to about a uh, mermaid statue. Um, I know uh, Nick had forwarded on and um, Susan Clay but you know you're just coming on here uh, Chad um, but have you had a chance to check out that proposal from a uh, gentleman yes uh, I've actually spoken with the gentleman and he he was actually I believe looking to try to present something to uh, this board or this committee in the coming month I think next month was what I last heard 
I've got to reach back out to him. Uh, there was a couple of questions that he had regarding locations and so on, and I think he had to uh, talk with a couple of other organizations to uh, get some information that was requested. So uh, I hope that we'll be able to have a little bit more information in the next meeting. Okay, thank you for that update. Um, Mr. Merritt, can you clarify with uh, conflicts of interest um, and protocol, if we are to be communicating directly with the public for proposals and presentations that are coming in front of our board. I know I've been contacted directly by multiple people. I, nine times out of 10, refer them back to staff so that I don't have that conflict of interest when we are making decisions, especially if it's discussion or questions about a call for artists or a call for work or a proposal that is prepared to come here. So that's why, as the chair, I do not correspond in that way. But can you give us clarification as to our protocol and what we are supposed to do with ethics and conflict of interest? Yes. Um, as far as the committee is concerned, you, can't, you cannot discuss any of those items among each other. Uh, if the public comes to you with a concern or, or question, and Councilman Perry can probably correct me if I'm wrong, but this... Uh, you are allowed to still talk to the public. Now, you cannot you know, commit yourself or commit the committee to any kind of decisions at that time, um, but that's kind of, you're, you're a representative of the community, so if you have different uh, patrons or constituents out in the public that come to you and they've got a concern and want to ask you a question about public art, then absolutely, I, I don't see why you can't communicate with them, but um, you just cannot decide to call uh, you know, Miss Kenny, and, and discuss whatever it is. Uh, it does have to be brought. If you are in doubt, it, you're welcome to send them my way, and I can communicate to the board as a whole. That way, that'll um, resolve any any you know possibilities of something going wrong. So, thank you very much for the clarification, Madam Chair. If I may just add on to that, I, Mr. Merritt is is pretty much dead on on that. What I would recommend, if you do have any kind of an extensive conversation of any significance with any prospective contractor with the city, that when you consider it before this committee, that you disclose that you've had that conversation, and uh, I think that that goes a long way toward if someone wanted to object to it and claim that you're biased um, you're allowed to be we're all biased so you're allowed to be biased but if you make a full disclosure of it then it gets that uh, out of the way I would, I would also caution members of this committee to be well versed in the actual mechanics of how the ordinance works how art is presented how we vote on it, things like that, before we make any kind of comments to any of the public so that we're not wrong um, in what's what what advice we're giving them. Make sure that you absolutely you're saying the right thing um, or refer them to the ordinance or to the city staff um, before you start talking about it. Um, I have another question about Gulf Shore Playhouse. Does anybody, can anybody tell us what's going on there in terms of, I know in the past we've just heard that they're, it's in, discussion about what they're doing for art. Do we know any more? Again, Paul Perry, City Council. I, uh, I don't know what their art plan is. Um, it might be an appropriate thing for you to invite uh, Ms. Corey to come in and, and let you know what they, they have in mind. Obviously, they've broken ground. We have approved the garage agreement, so the garage uh, is now in design in the in the early very beginning of the design phase uh, but as far as um, any art over there um, we were just trying to get through breaking ground and and getting the garage built which isn't very sexy but it had to get done um, so I would I certainly would encourage you to have Miss Corey come in because that's going to be a fabulous structure and it's uh, uh, anything we can do to enhance the art would be great Thank you for that update. Any other questions or concerns? 
That brings us to item number eight, which is adjournment of the meeting. <laughs> Can I get a motion? I move, uh, move we adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting.